do now. Uh, well, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for attending this uh, first uh, Transform Capacity Building session. I think we, we are sure, pretty sure that you will find it useful for the activities that we have to perform within Transform and surely also for other activities beyond, beyond Transform. Uh, today, we are going to learn more about the methodology and also the results of the regional uh, RRI maturity assessment that was performed within the MARI project. As you may, may know, I, I, I want to contextualize a little bit uh, the MARI project. Um, MARI is the acronym of Mainstreaming Responsible Innovation in, Euro in European Estri. Its objective to improve regional public policy that supports delivery of RRI to enterprises product, uh, process and service design, production and distribution. Uh, so as you can see, our, project, our projects are uh, Transform and MARI are totally related. So within MARI, an RRI maturity assessment of each uh, different region has been already performed. Uh, so this capacity building session uh, will look in depth at the practical aspects of the methodological approach and also to the, to the, to the results of it. The main reason why we decided to start with this um, topic is uh, because we consider that we can extract valuable knowledge and strategies for addressing this kind of assessments that at regional level that can be somehow difficult to, to perform and specifically our own mapping task that uh, we have to perform within transforming the next uh, uh, months. And, and well, I, let me introduce Julia. Given her knowledge and her experience, she's one of the members of the, uh, the Transform Advisory Board uh, with an, an overall role regarding the, the better understanding of three elements, uh, processes, structures, and also the ending of our right uh, elements within S3. Julia Bolini is a CCO at the Center of in, uh, for Innovation and Economic Development, which is an agency of the Chamber of uh, Commerce in, Roma in Romania, in Italy. She has a degree in, in economics and business and a postgraduate training on SMEs internationalization. Julia's expertise is in responsible innovation comes uh, from the field because uh, she has been many years uh, working in supporting small businesses to increase the demand for sustainability and social accountability. And she has been working on European territorial cooperation projects for over 15 years. And she's currently coordinating ongoing projects as, as did one, this one, uh, Marie, Interreg Europe Marie, and also Interreg Central Europe Rossi. And also she's, uh, Julia, so, uh, also member uh, currently of the AIDS 2020 Territorial Board of uh, Advisors. Uh, so during the, just, just to say, during the presentation, you can enter all, all your questions and doubts uh, in the chat, but we will leave, uh, uh, we will, we will leave uh, time after the presentation to solve uh, all these doubts and questions and also to, to debate. So, um, and without further delay, I leave the floor to you, Julia. Um, thank you everyone for having me and thank you Diana for the extensive uh, introduction so I don't have to do it myself and get the you know awful feeling of uh, recruitment interview you know when you have to sell yourself so thank you very much um, and also for the introduction to to Marie um, I I will try and share my my screen as I prepared some slides actually I prepared quite a number of slides but it, more with the idea of leaving them to you maybe for, for you know later on reference that really to go through all of them uh, today this this afternoon so let me try uh, okay can you see my screen Yes. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Right. Um, so just a, a quick slide, just to um, let you know a bit more about my organization, Chise, and how we came uh, to deal um, with responsible research and innovation, actually more with responsible innovation than research as um, an agency of a chamber of commerce, we're closer to enterprises than we are to the research to the research world and, and, and we normally um, support companies in, in, in um, uh, implementing result of, results of applied research rather than uh, working on, on um, basic research. But anyway, um, since we've been, uh, we, we were born uh, on a mission to promote innovation uh, and uh, since in the late 90s, early uh, 2000s, 
um, we also decided that uh, responsible, uh, sorry, that um, uh, corporate social responsibility was a way to innovate. We were kind of struck um, by the, the emerging debate on, on responsible research and innovation because it really seemed like a way to bring the two things together, innovation and, and, and corporate uh, social responsibility. So we, we started working on, on a number of, of, of initiatives and, and, and also projects that were specifically aimed at uh, you know, breaking the news with, with enterprises, basically, on how they could be um, uh, socially and environmentally accountable, not just in managing their, their activities, but also in designing their, their innovations. And, and although we started working with, with enterprises, we, we also realized that the concept was very powerful also for policymaking, because basically what it, what it does in very practical terms is, is um, um, giving a multiplying effect to the investments that, uh, for instance, regions do uh, on, uh, on supporting innovation, because, you know, as we all, everybody knows within this, this, this group this afternoon, um, responsible innovation delivers on the, on the smart, sustainable and inclusive uh, Europe goals, right? So it's basically um, getting more out of a, of a single euro that would be normally invested in innovation with further, uh, without further specifications. Uh, so uh, Marie is, is the still ongoing project that we're working on. Uh, but we just uh, um, ended also another project specifically dealing with, resp with responsible innovation, but working uh, more closely with enterprises, that is ROSI. So maybe during the discussion, I will also mention some, some elements uh, that we, 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 we discovered, so to speak, in, in ROSI and that might be of some interest for you. Um, so Diana already told you what Marie is about, so I'll just give you some, some figures so you can understand the width of the project. So we are 10 partners from eight European regions, pretty much spread all over Europe. So we have Spain, Italy, Romania, and we have uh, Finland, Greece, uh, Germany, and who am I missing? France, sorry, and, and Ireland, right? Um, um, Marie is an interreg Europe project, so it's a, a European territorial cooperation project, which means it's, it's a bit di different from, uh, from research and innovation uh, projects funded by Horizon 2020, as in the case of, of Transform. We're not supposed to produce new knowledge, but we are supposed to, to uh, improve in, in using existing knowledge to, to build capacity uh, in pursuing uh, our institutional objectives. Um, I'll try and, and be a bit more um, clear and specific. Um, ETC, European Territorial Cooperation, is part of, of the cohesion policy. And, and the cohesion policy uh, has the aim of, of, of building um, a stronger Europe uh, by uh, you know, helping everybody to, to become better at, at uh, local policy making, national, regional, and local policy making, and, and, and become better by uh, exchanging with other, with other regions. So the structure of, of, uh, of a European territorial cooperation project and specifically of, of um, interact project is, is pretty, um, uh, uh, I would say, it's given by the problem itself. You, you don't get to, to, to be too creative about how you structure a project. What you have to do is, is start from a, a common set of, of, of goals, uh, uh, not necessarily a similar conditions because reason can be very different, but a common set of issues and, 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 and goals. And um, what you have to do is basically exchange good practices. So, uh, contribute your own good practices dealing with the issue that it's a core of your project and, and adopting good practices from, from other. Of course, you don't just don't copy paste good practices, so you need to understand them, you need to identify those that are more suitable for your local goals, you need to have uh, to get help 
from your uh, from your peers within the project in order to understand how to adopt and adapt the good practices and all these um, to plan some tangible actions that will eventually improve uh, improve your your regional policies. So this is exactly what we did uh, within uh, within Marie. Uh, in, in the slide, you will see that pilot action has a slightly different background because it's not uh, a mandatory part of, of this kind of project. And for instance, we have no pilot actions within, uh, within Mali. We, so we really, uh, we're sticking to the, to the um, basic structure of, of interact projects. Um, so uh, talking about the, the maturity, the RRI maturity mapping methodology that we used within Marie, and that might be the uh, most interesting feature of our project for you. Um, what, what we created was an original methodology, but which built on, on, on previous experiences and, and, and literature. Uh, for instance, we um, took into account the work of the expert group on policy indicators for, for responsible research and innovation, which I, I believe um, uh, Roger was part of. Uh, we built on the Murray set of indicators and, and also, of course, we took into account the regional innovation scoreboard. It was not mandatory for us, it was not in the, in the call fish, as I believe it was for you to make reference to these sources, but uh, they were, and I believe they still are the, 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 the main references when you get to uh, think of what, uh, when you think about measuring uh, RRI. What, what, what um, our mapping exercise was specifically aimed at um, being able to match the good practices with the local uh, needs uh, with reference to mainstreaming responsible research and innovation in, in regional policies. Uh, therefore, what we should have been doing um, was focusing on, uh, on indicators uh, that uh, were about the process and the conditions rather than the uh, output of responsible um, innovation, which is something that in, uh, reflects uh, in specifically the reasoning that has been done within the expert group. Uh, also, Moray reflects on that, but uh, uh, the expert group does it better uh, in, 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 in trying and make us understand that one thing is the output and one thing is, is the condition that eventually will lead to, um, to that output. Uh, however, at the end of the day, it's not e always so easy to, to separate the two things. So sometimes uh, in defining indicators, we were not so, so strict as in uh, going only for uh, indicators that describe the conditions rather than the outcomes of, uh, of uh, innovation with, with, with reference to uh, responsible innovation. Um, again, uh, the idea was to give priority to secondary rather than primary data. And, and why that? Because again, we were not a, a research project. So we basically did have, didn't have uh, time nor, nor budget to really conduct some kind of extensive survey and, and, and collect primary data. So we said to ourselves, uh, you know, let's look for uh, secondary uh, data, um, possibly, if not available, we'll see what we what, what can do about it <laughs> and, and, and maybe collect some, some, some information ourselves. Also, we, we try to stick to qualitative data, but that wasn't always possible. Uh, you know, there were times when uh, uh, secondary data were not available, primary, uh, you know, looking for primary data, collecting primary data was not, was not possible. So we had to rely basically on, on, on our knowledge of what was going on. Uh, we were measuring our right regional level uh, with the exception of, of CHISE, which um, has a geographical scope as a sub region of Region Emilia Romagna. Everybody else was a regional authority. Uh, so I think we, 
you know, we, we felt pretty confident that the new uh, uh, their, the regional innovation ecosystems and therefore could, could um, go ahead with some qualitative, uh, rather the quantitative indicators. Um, then we decided on, 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 on ranges uh, of values in order to rank a region as either substantially mature, moderately or, 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 or modestly mature with, with uh, reference to um, RRI. Um, the methodology was, was um, uh, designed uh, mainly by uh, Professor Elenia Puspori and Professor Christo Tsanos from uh, AWEP Athens. Uh, but it really was um, a, a process of, of intense exchange. Among documents that we have defined in the methodology, we have the different versions of the methodology, and then we have, you know, smaller internal deliverables, uh, mentioning all the, the comments that they received from, from the partners, and going back to those documents, you know, right before this meeting to refresh things in my mind, uh, you know, I was, you know, kind of shocked uh, uh, you know, about how much work we did to, to really come to this methodology, which if you look at it now, seems so simple, even simplistic, but you know, it was, it was a lot of perspiration uh, besides inspiration uh, to, to get to what seems uh, a very simple uh, uh, outcome. Um, so, uh, the indicators that, that we choose were, as we said, inspired by uh, the expert group, but also the, the, the moderate set of indicators. And in some cases, we just uh, kind of define them ourselves. Uh, the sources that were identified were, you know, many, and uh, I had a couple of very lovely conversations with Diana uh, over the past weeks, uh, uh, trying to understand where to look for, for information once you've decided what your indicators are. And uh, there's plenty of sources. The problem is that they uh, very seldom address the regional level. Uh, you know, in most cases, even in the case of the regional innovation scoreboard, the, 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 the data are at, you know, uh, address the national level. So, um, so it's complicated in a way, okay? Uh, but not impossible. I mean, we've, we've done it within, uh, um, you know, a European Territorial Cooperation Project, so you will do such, uh, you know, a, a much, much better job, I'm sure, since your scientific approach is, is probably more sound. Our was very practical to, to many extents, right? Um, so uh, initially, we um, identified um, a different number of indicators for the different uh, RRI dimensions. Uh, uh, but then we, we decided to have uh, two in the same number of indicators for each dimension. Uh, basically, this was uh, because although uh, if you uh, perform uh, some kind of materiality assessment for each specific region uh, or organization, uh, not every RRI key has the same importance as others. So maybe you would like to have more indicators pertaining those uh, dimensions that matter more to you. But since we, uh, at the beginning, we basically didn't have a clue, no? Then we were just at the beginning of this, this exercise and many of the partners didn't even have a, um, a, a very, a complete understanding of our eye. We just thought not to uh, uh, weight uh, in, to give different, indirectly different weights to the different dimensions because we had more data on a dimension rather than another. And um, let me take one step back. Um, we use the RRI keys or dimensions uh, as uh, identified by, by the European Commission. Uh, uh, we did that because at that time, uh, basically that was, uh, I don't mean the only way you looked at RRI, but um, I mean, it was big. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, right? It was the, the dimensions that we all used. Uh, uh, if, if you looked at, uh, I don't know, maybe 
only at the outcomes rather at the process because you know this, the operational dimension of our RI and then and, and the area thinking uh, maybe those could be more interesting if, if you were focusing on, on on the approach rather than than the outcomes but anyway at that time we used the RI keys because everybody was using the RI keys basically and um, we, we Maybe we didn't know better, uh, although during the course of the project, we realized that sometimes, especially if you deal with enterprises, uh, the keys uh, can become an obstacle, or at least they require a lot of debate and, and explanation before they make, before they make sense to, to enterprises, uh, or at least outside of the academia. Uh, maybe if you, were, if you were to do the mapping now, we would give uh, a bit more thinking um, on the SDGs. Uh, if nothing else, because uh, what we're seeing at regional level during the discussion uh, around the new regional smart specialization strategy is that the SDGs come into the picture very, very often because the stakeholders are, you know, uh, are aware of them because uh, because of the buzz, basically. So um, it was maybe because of the buzz around the ROI keys that we chose the ROI keys at that time. Maybe we will be choosing the SDGs now because of the buzz around them. Uh, I'm sorry if you know I, I sound so down to earth, but uh, again, dealing with, with regional policies and, and, and policy makers, um, you really need to um, be hands on. And, and also be able to speak uh, uh, a language that not just resonates with their, with their priority, but also uh, with the kind of, of, uh, of interaction that they need to have with the stakeholders. So um, you, you need to be able to make use of, of, uh, of the common jargon around uh, corporate social responsibility or responsible innovation out there in the real world among enterprises if you want to make them understand that you actually try and do something towards that direction so sometimes you forget about being too scientific to uh even you know maybe robust enough in your in your uh analysis but uh being understood and getting things done is, is it really is a priority within projects like um the interact family um okay so but as I said, at that time, we were sticking to the keys and uh, to using uh, uh, two indicators for uh, every uh, single one of, of the keys. Uh, I've put the indicators on, on slides, but I don't think it's very um, useful now to, to go into the detail. Just, you know, I'll flip through the slides so you can be able to see that there are different sources that we resorted to and uh, in, in terms of you know where the data were retrieved and also different sources in, in the sense of where we got the indicator from um, so that's the first slide and you see more and more in, inspired by more and you see the euro barometer and the statistical yearbook and um, Further on, again, the expert group, the expert group again, the MORE, and uh, uh, and so on. And, and in this slide specifically, we, we couldn't find uh, for, for these indicator any um, common uh, source of, of information. So we thought that we should, you know, proceed to some kind of primary data collection. Um, again. Uh, Okay, this is a last slide. Uh, I will give you the slides and I will send you the, the methodology so we don't need to spend too much time on, on, on these indicators, unless you want to go back uh, uh, to them during the discussion that will follow. Of course, once you have indicators, you still don't have the, the metrics, so to speak. You still need to uh, decide uh, when uh, maturity is substantial, when is moderate and when is modest. Uh, so we had to decide uh, what, uh, you know, what were the, the different level of, of the values that the indicator um, would, would have at regional level in order to say that the region was scoring substantial rather than modest rather than moderate. Um, again, 
I put everything on the slide, but I don't think that we need to, to uh, go through them in details. Just to uh, let you know that the kind of work that we've been doing uh, for gender equality, one of the, um, uh, you know, the benchmarks for one of the indicators had to be revised when we were already uh, during our mapping exercise because, uh, you know, it basically wasn't working. <laughs> so uh, what we got at the end as our final methodology has been thoroughly tested, I would say, uh, also in terms of bumps that we uh, found on the road, obstacles to collecting information and how we uh, tried and, and overcome those bumps and, and, and obstacles. Um, so uh, uh, again, the benchmarks, the results, uh, in case you're curious to know how, how we scored. Um, as you can see, uh, every region um, within uh, the, 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 the Marie Consortium scored modest, uh, uh, most of them scored modest, and two of them were uh, you know, had some, some, some elements of, of moderate maturity in the case of the Tampa region, substantial maturity too. Uh, this does not reflect uh, uh, um, a, a thorough uh, and, and, and uh, awareness on, on the concepts of responsible research and innovation as, as, as a framework. Um, this reflected more the kind of, of, if you wish, also ethical approach that these regions were already able to put in place towards the issue of, of, um, of innovation. For instance, in the case of, of Tampere, uh, they are prioritizing artificial intelligence and, and IT in general. So I'm sure that you know, everyone within this group this afternoon is aware that uh, the thinking over responsible research and innovation had, uh, since the very beginning, a strong tie with um, uh, with the you know with IT uh, emerging uh, issues. Um, one thing that I forgot to say is that there are you know different definition of responsible research and innovation. We uh, decided that we would uh, be faithful to the definition by, by von Schoenberg. Uh, so this is what we um, kept in mind uh, when, when, when we try to understand whether something was actually uh, within the domain of, of RRI or, or not. Um, uh, I was ju just let me give a quick look at the slide to see whether there was something worth mentioning in terms of um, uh, what we found. Uh, yeah, in, in case of public engagement, the um, the regions that um, were, uh, were were scoring better. Uh, did not have, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of, of stakeholder engagement that we, we, we think about now is, is much more complicated than that at that time. <laughs> you know, uh, this is an exercise that was carried out in 2017. And um, at least at regional level, uh, everybody was pretty naive about it. You know, so a consultation would would work as as public engagement. Uh, of course, you uh, by a consultation you, you reach out to your community, uh, but it is the interaction and and and, and the uh, iteration of the process that is is uh, is supposed to take place. If you go we go back to the definition of von Schomburg, that wasn't really in place at that time, and it's not that much in place uh, at present either. Uh, so don't, I'm saying this as in don't get too excited uh, about those who scored, <laughs> you know, uh, moderate or substantial about uh, public engagement and, and, and don't get too curious about possible good practices because there weren't 
that many, okay? And, and in many cases, as in the case of, of Tampere, um, the, 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 the public engagement uh, was uh, basically uh, connected to uh, urban planning type things, which so far, I would say it's the domain where uh, public authorities have, you know, have, have worked harder and become better in terms of um, exchanging with stakeholders, which is a completely different thing from designing a policy and definitely a completely different thing for, for what uh, is required on, on, the, uh, on the enterprises part. Um, Okay, let's move on. Uh, just so that, you know, I give you a bit more information on, on, on what kind of views we made of, of that mapping. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we needed the mapping in order to have a, a sound uh, basis to uh, decide which good practices we were going to uh, adapt and adopt. Uh, there were many interesting good practices, but we, we, we thought that we need to be, uh, you know, a bit more, um, you know, um, strict and precise and in a way, in, in also in a way scientific in, in, um, in the process of, of, of choosing uh, the, the good practices that we wanted to bring, bring back home. So we thought, first thing first, Let's try and understand what our weaknesses are and therefore our needs are in terms to become more mature in, in mainstreaming our RI and our regional policies. And then, uh, which was something that we did at the same time, uh, but uh, you know, uh, just for the sake of explaining, I'm talking about it now. And then let's try and see how those good practices uh, address the different elements of, of RRI and um, what uh, conditions in terms of maturity need to be in place for those good practices to be effectively uh, adopted. So the, the reasoning over uh, the RRI keys uh, and, and the maturity, the RRI maturity was not just uh, came into the picture, not just to identify our needs, but also in terms of classifying the good practices. Uh, maybe it, it, it's clear if I show you uh, the next slide. So for each of the good practices that we, we collected and that we describe according to uh, the, the, the description, the mandatory description that was demanded by the interact, to which we added some other elements, so for each good practices, we try to understand, uh, you know, what the, the preconditions in terms of uh, our maturity were, which dimension they covered, and also, and this is something that belongs specifically to uh, Marie, uh, which uh, to which uh, group of, of, of which type of actions it, they could be um, linked to. We uh, classified possible actions to be planned to be about uh, the quadruple uh, open innovation and um, information and tools. Uh, we choose this, uh, and, and then of course we have to open the floor to others as it always happens, because once you prepare the application form, you know, you have everything planned out and then you get to get, you know, you get to actually doing things and you realize you missed something. So other is always there. But anyway, uh, the reason why we choose quadruple helix, open innovation and, and information and, and tools is because at the end of the day, uh, the, the regional innovation policies that we were working with were those related to the ERDF, therefore uh, linked to the regional operational plans, therefore to the smart specialization, uh, smart regional smart specialization strategies. And at the end of the day, they all are about 
the, the enterprises and, and, uh, and the kind of innovation that they, they, they bring to the market and uh, how they bring it to the market and supporting these processes and directing the processes towards uh, uh, those uh, priorities that were identified in terms of, of sectors or in terms of scenarios that were identified in the regional smart specialization strategies. Uh, so we try to classify the actions in a way that could be immediately translated in the regional operational plans. Um, okay. Um, yes, more good practices. Um, we, we can also go into the detail of the good practice, but I don't think it's very interesting at, uh, at this point in time. Um, we, you know, apart from, from, from the maturity mapping, uh, you know, using indicators and uh, secondary data and, and all the things that we talk about until now, we also uh, um, performed a very, very small um, uh, enterprise survey. We interviewed 23 enterprises, uh, evenly divided, more or less evenly divided, because it's an even number and we have um, uh, it's an, an odd number and we have a number of, of partners, but anyway, uh, we interviewed a number of enterprises, you know, within the geographical uh, scope of Mari, and uh, we inquired about their understanding of RRI, whether they already had some actions uh, in place that were uh, addressing elements of RRI, whether they felt uh, that what they did was was a good practices, as in something that they've been doing for you know some time, and they were able to provide evidence that that it worked. Uh, so we basically applied the same concept of, of of good practices that we've been using, something that it 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 it's proved to work, something that already has delivered tangible results. Uh, so um, the, the, the enterprises that were interviewed felt that they were already uh, uh, performing public engagement to some extent, that were taking care of ethical issues, that they had um, element of open access within their innovation processes, that were supporting science education and gender equality. So public engagement, uh, was basically referring to you know elements of, of in, engagement with the community uh, connected to corporate social responsibility so it was not exactly something that was serving the purposes of the innovation processes but via this engagement you know with the community uh, they got you know some at least food for thoughts for their innovations as well, which is basically one of, of the, the selling arguments of, of our ride, you know, by, by engaging with your stakeholders, you might find out that there, you know, there, there are um, gaps in the market that might need filling and that you could help filling with your products and services. Um, ethics, just as gender equality was, uh, you know, in most cases, something that they, they felt they did and they discussed about as some kind of badge of honor that they were really emotional about. Uh, of course, you know, we, we uh, respect women and that kind of stuff. And then if you try and, and you know, go uh, a bit more in depth, uh, they don't really have procedure to make sure that what they what they claim and what they actually feel they're doing uh, is, is actually effectively, effectively in place. They, they might have very strong values uh, encompassing you know, ethical and gender equality concerns, even in the policies. But uh, if you, you know, um, scratch the surface and for instance, you ask them about the recruitment processes, you know, it's not, uh, it's not gold all that shines, so to speak. Open access uh, was more about open innovation and, and their openness to share uh, information on their innovation uh, processes 
so that external um, parties could um, participate in. Uh, there's design thinking, for instance, uh, um, uh, within this, 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 uh, the good practices that uh, um, the enterprises were talking about. And science education is basically how they support uh, STEM education with funding, with uh, internships and that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Uh, the survey also revealed that there are some internal and external drivers. That's basically the reason why they, they felt it was worth engaging with RRI. And uh, culture was a big thing. Like this is what we you know what we are. These are our values, and therefore we you know we it's in our DNA to align with RRI and that kind of stuff. In, in some cases, it was a uh, thinking around the opportunity, uh, and uh, in some other cases, it was you know about the partnership that we're um, uh, building with with people that were already more aware of the concept. And of course, a general driver would be incentive, trends on the market, and a possible competitive advantage. Uh, factors to engage in RRI, neighbors and barriers. This might be interesting because, as uh, policymakers, is is um, is always nice to understand what is expected from us because enabler is what we they ask us to 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 boost, you know. And, and barriers is what they want us to, to, to overcome. So uh, financial uh, issues uh, as in um, need to get more public money is always there, always, 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 always there. Uh, but uh, in many cases, it was also felt that um, they, they, they lacked capacity uh, to engage in responsible research and innovation, and they also lacked um, uh, the premises in a way, uh, because come, you know, in order to engage with your stakeholders, you have to build an environment which is you know consists of shared knowledge, but also in in in, in practical way to perform you know, to, to uh, uh, an effective dialogue. Uh, of course, the world has changed since then, because, you know, we were talking about physical premises at that time, you know, places where you could convene your stakeholders and lots of post-its and, and whiteboards and stuff. Uh, now we do most things at distance, so uh, we, we need uh, digital platforms and, and tools more than we needed premises at that time. Um, I think, uh, well, this is what we a slide just to tell you that with now the action plans are up and running. What we're doing now is monitoring the action plan. And, um, and we're dealing now with one of the issues that you've been dealing from the beginning. That's actually how we measure impact. Because, you know, you plan your actions, you have uh, you know, all your set of indicators that made you plan those specific actions, but now you want to make sure that you, what you plan is really changing things. And of course, it might have been good to also have um, uh, some, you know, um, thinking over the monitoring indicators before we set up the action plans, but uh, we didn't have time at that time. So we're doing it now. And, uh, and, and I'm sorry to say that I don't have a lot uh, to say about it and a lot to contribute. It's more likely that uh, it's going to be the other way around. I, I, I'm looking to transform for, for inspiration. Um, uh, well, I, I, I leave it here. What I have in the next slides, in case you're curious, are uh, some some actions from the actions plan action plans of our partners, and uh, and also the results of um, a survey that we conducted among enterprises within another um, project, uh, Interreg Central Europe Rosy, which I briefly mentioned, and uh, that was trying to bring our right towards uh, enterprises, uh, but. I think I've already um, uh, gone beyond the time that was allocated, so I, I would um, leave it to, to you and to your questions uh, if, if it's okay.
Thank you so much, uh, Julia. Uh, I think it has been a very interesting and fruitful and fruitful presentation. From my point of view, of course, we have been having compensations, you and me, so we, we share uh, we shared a lot of things. But I found that you managed to expose uh, perfectly and in a very clear way a thing that is, uh, in fact, uh, very complex and that you have also exposed uh, both the issues that we are uh, currently struggling with and, and also the propositive ideas that we are having. So, I, uh, from my opinion, it was, uh, was perfect. Um, from, I have received here a question from, from, a, from one of the partners, but I think that we, maybe it will work better uh, if we do it uh, more in an informal way and we can ask, uh, everyone can ask their own uh, questions and we can uh, exchange and share it in kind of, of, of debate uh, in a sense. What do you think about that? Okay, so if uh, anyone has a question. I saw Roger was scratching his head and that got me worried. <laughs> Hello, Roger. Yeah, I, I, um, there are many things we, many interest, interesting issues to discuss. Thank you very much, Julia, for this tour de force through, through Marie. Uh, and uh, of course, many of these pragmatic choices that one has to make, we can all recognize, I think. I, I, I have perhaps one question to you, and that is um, <clears throat> the way you had to do this RRI maturity score, I guess, that, or, or you chose to, to do it. And, and then I wondered to what extent you actually ended up using it to identify the RRI needs to act upon. Because I, from the flow diagram, I could understand that in a way you had the, the stream of work uh, compiling this maturity score, but then also another stream of work that was more perhaps on, on sort of the specific needs perceived in the, in the different regions. And did, did you, uh, at the end of the day, did you end up sort of using that maturity score much? Uh, I think you're muted. Uh, okay. um... Yes, indeed, we did, we did use it. Um, the reason why we, we performed this uh, maturity mapping exercise was really uh, to be able to, to tell our policy makers why we were suggesting to adopt a good practice rather than another. Uh, there were good practices that were super sexy uh, in, in the eyes of policymakers, uh, but they were just that, you know, there was something that uh, we felt that each of us felt that for our local um, innovation ecosystems, they were, uh, you know, you know, out of their league, <laughs> you know, still using the metaphor of, of, of sexiness. Um, so we needed to, to have evidence uh, of, of why we were telling them we should go for this good practice rather than this other one, although this other one is, is, is nicer, right? Um, and, uh, and, and in order to do that, we needed to have evidence that we were mature or not so mature with reference to those uh, dimensions that uh, uh, you know, uh, where at that time was were mainly used to describe uh, the domain of of, of RRI. So um, this 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 I, I think I'm still sharing my screen, right? Can you still no no not anymore? Okay, um, but anyway, uh, so. Uh, at, at one point, I, I shared a slide that was uh, that had uh, good practices uh, on the rows and, and the columns of different dimension of RRI and the different um, um, uh, maturity level. So we had a, a way uh, to be able to match all this information 
in order to uh, quite automatically dash mathematically get into the point where we could say cheese should shop only among these good practices and forget about these others. Okay, and this is actually what we did. Uh, uh, again, uh, I can uh, share with you uh, the, the results of this exercise that really show what, uh, at the end of the day, uh, each partner uh, had to concentrate on as a result of uh, as a result of this of this analysis. So we we did we did use it, and it was it was useful. It was useful for ourselves ourselves as, as a consortia, but it was extremely useful in order to um, sell our work to the policymakers. I may have a small follow up question on that. Thank you. Thanks. So <laughs> um, also on this kind of uh, maturity scoring and I'm new to this group so this might be a stupid question um, does this mean that you kind of gave these scorings back to also the regions and the question is for two reasons because I would be interested if there was an opportunity to kind of collaboratively reflect on the scorings and also on the indicators that were used for the scorings. And the second part of the question would be, in some regions, there might be even a kind of political interest to receive a low scoring, to make an argument, okay, we need more kind of resources to actually do this. So I would be interested kind of the different uh, ecosystems in which those um, scorings were used and also received and maybe given feedback on. Okay. Thank you for your question. <laughs> I like the, you know, the, the thinking that sometimes you, you need to use your information in a, in a kind of mischievous way, uh, uh, manipulating uh, not information but the people that receive the information. A, a, anyway, um, so uh, partner, many partners are uh, either regional. Uh, authorities or regional um, innovation and development development innovation agencies. CISA is the exception. We are the agency of a chamber of commerce uh, that happens to cover uh, most of the sub-region Romania within Emilia Romagna, but we're not um, a regional authority ourselves. So, um, of course, uh, you know, there were policy uh, officers working on the project and not politicians, okay? Uh, but still, you know, people within Mari are regional policy officers. So uh, in terms of um, checking that the methodology and the outcomes uh, was fitting uh, their needs as in the way they design their policies, the kind of information that they're able to process, and 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 also the, the kind of you know the priorities that we're supposed to, to to stick to at that time. Because at that time, now you know we, we are in the process of defining define the new uh, smart specialization strategies. But at that time, the strategies were already there. The regional operational plans were already there. So, uh, and, and the interact program rules themselves told us that we should not be creative. Uh, the kind of policy improvements that were allowed were only uh, changing the, to the existing uh, policy instruments. Policy instruments being the regional operational um, plans and the axes and measures that were already there. So we could not suggest creating an additional axis or an additional measure. We could only improve what was already there. So uh, having that in mind, um, checking that what we were doing made sense
sense to what was already in place was a continuous process. They're doing some construction works outside. So if you hear strange noises, it's, it's that the, the heater is broken. So it's, you know, full blow. So if I don't keep the, the window open, I'll just uh, faint or something. Uh, so I apologize for the noises. Um, uh, so uh, this is to say that, you know, we, we continuously check that it made sense within the, the framework of existing regional policies. Um, at the same time, uh, when then you deliver the results to the actual policy maker, uh, indeed, they might feel that regardless what we, you know, what the methodology deliver, uh, they might want to, to still prioritize something, not something else, but within the, 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 the options that you present them, they might want to stress uh, something more than, than something else. And, uh, and they don't even need to, you know, to kind of say, let, let's say that we score worse than we actually do. The only thing that they need to say is that this is a top priority. So rather than, you know, going below in the score, they raise the bar. So, you know, the difference kind of stays the same. And so that becomes important. The gap is the same. You know, they low, they higher, make the bar higher rather than lower the score. So you still have a huge gap that you might say this is what we should invest on. Thank you. Uh, maybe you want me to read uh, Inyas the question that you that you made in the in the chat, or you want to do it? No, I can I can. Uh, <laughs> um, I was thinking uh, at, at the answer of uh, Julia at the same time. Julia, my my question is the following: uh, You present um, different indicator, but do you know for which actor? do this indicator characterize difficult objective to achieve and why? I will just give you an example. When I was working with the scrap merchant, these are brutal, strong guy buying and, and uh, uh, collecting scrap. If I ask them to um, uh, focus on gender e equality, they would maybe punch me in the face because that was their way to, to speak their, their mind. Uh, and it would be very difficult for them to reach gender equality, okay? And I know, I knew when, when we were designing some standards and some rule for that circular economy, I knew that that could be a too difficult uh, indicator to reach, okay? Well, that's just a funny example, but did you, may that, did you make that kind of test before just to know what kind of actor you are facing? And also to know that maybe for some indicator, they could just self-regulate and to reach a high level of indicator without uh, having any difficulties, any effort. Okay, so in terms of uh, the maturity mapping exercise, what we did is uh, use uh, data that had already been collected and they were giving um, um, aggregated information. It's okay. not in terms. It's not in terms of maturity. It's in terms of the educator uh, you took from from among other Mori. Uh, the the one you have on your uh, first slides. You choose those rather than than others. For instance, no. you check that reaching, for example, gender equality was difficult for some actors. Or did, did you skip that kind of test? I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. I, I Maybe now I understood it. We did not look into the why uh, some, some, some scores were, were low. We did not uh, look into what happened in, in order for those results uh, uh, to be measured at, at regional at regional level. Although I I, I agree that uh, and, and that it, it, you know measuring RI really 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 depends on on the context. Um, 
this kind of exercises uh, leave more questions that they answer to probably and even more so when you get closer to, to the action planning process uh, and, and to actually rolling out the, the actions because for instance gender is, is an, an, an excellent example because there are uh, sectors and, and, and industries where uh, you can't think of, of reaching of addressing gender and is I need to have just as many women as uh, as men within within my company right uh, there, maybe there are other ways to address that and and of course gender is not always an issue of quota sometimes it's uh, an issue of, um, of of gendered innovation for instance the reason why in certain sectors you, you can only have more men than women uh, might be about uh, you know the way that we design the processes the way that we design the machines so maybe the issue is not so much to have uh, uh, women breaking their back doing a job that you know better men are better at doing because they're stronger but maybe it's because why are we still using those processes and those machines to do you know whatever so uh, the closer that you get to the actual level where innovation is designed, uh, the, the, the more important this kind of details uh, become. But at the time uh, our maturity mapping was, was performed, uh, what we did was basically selecting some indicators that we felt we might uh, retrieve some data about that in, in, in every region, right? So we, we, it was a process of, uh, you know, deleting those indicators that proved too difficult in a way and keeping those that were, were easier. Uh, the reason why we did that um, is mostly because uh, as I said before, um, it was not the main purpose of, of the project. Uh, it was to us, it was an add on to make our, you know, our claims, our recommendations to the policymakers more, more sound. We, we thought we need to have a robust methodology to support what we were telling them. Uh, but at the same time, we could not be as refined as for instance, you might need to be your project being a research and, and innovation project. Um, but this, you know, the more I get to think about, you know, measuring and assessing innovation and and and, and trying to provide enterprises with with measures and uh, and reasons why you should do it, and 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 the more I think that at the end of the day is is just a matter of being convinced. And once you're convinced, you do a nice materiality assessment, you know, of what matters to you because you can really act on, on that. And then you just go ahead in a way, you know? So uh, although I understand that the, 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 the Marie methodology may be lacking to many extent to a very uh, scientific eye, a very strict, approach at the same time I, I don't think that we really needed more than that because the, the, the kind of discussion that was that was triggered uh, by, by that assessment uh, gave us so much more than, than we expected so in a way that served the purpose and, and that was all we could ask for okay thank you Julia, I was also curious to know how, yeah, if, if the regions and cities you have involved, uh, uh, regions mostly, um, if they have already some ways to um, at least measure some of these indicators in place. So if there was any measurement of this that was already taking place before uh, you, you, you did it in Marie, and if so, 
uh, how was it framed in the regions? I'm just curious to see if it was like something completely new to them or if it was something that they were, maybe they were calling it in different ways, eh? but, but I think that maybe some something was already being assessed and if so, by whom? So is it more like the regions uh, doing this or is it the single the, in, the research institutions or the single in, innovators like companies or things like that? Um, okay, so nobody was was uh, using the work of, of the expert group and 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 the, the results of the motor project as as such. So uh, there were no local measures uh, being made by the partners with reference to the indicators that we chose. Choose, but at the same time. Uh, there were a couple of partners that were already working on a measuring impact of research and innovation projects with uh, attention to what we may look at as RRI keys or, 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 or dimensions. For instance, uh, Southern Regional uh, Assembly uh, along with um, uh, what's the name again? Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, it's, it's their council for research, SRI. I can't remember what the acronym stands for. Uh, oh my god! It's okay. Yeah, I will. Go, I will search <laughs> while you. <laughs> but anyway, so what happens is that. Region, I'll just tell you the story so you understand and maybe you work it out So, uh, Southern Regional Assembly um, does not uh, manage directly the funds for research projects. They have SR, SFI, sorry, Science Foundation Ireland, that Science Foundation Ireland managed those funds. And they already had in place, Science Foundation Ireland, um, a way to uh, measure the, the impact of these projects. So some elements uh, that um, some other right criteria were already including the, in this uh, impact measurement of uh, research uh, projects that were funded with public money in, um, in Southern Ireland. But as a result of Marie, uh, these, these indicators that Science Foundation Ireland uses have been broadened, so they now include um, um, RRI requirements that can be more directly linked to the, the RRI keys, uh, to the RRI operational dimensions. But indeed, uh, in Ireland, they were already familiar with at least some elements uh, falling within the keys. And another partner that was already uh, taking into account um, these elements was um, uh, Centre Val de Loire. Uh, they had um, a project and initiative um, that was about um, excellence in research. So they also were working um, a bit more in depth with ethical issues and stuff. Um, and, and, um, and again, uh, always in Centre Val de Loire, they also had a quite strong experience with um, EDP methodologies to design their regional uh, policies. So some elements that can be linked to our rise in the case of stakeholders engagement uh, were already there. But, uh, you know, th there was no region that, that had an actual system to measure how they were faring against the, the RRI dimensions. And, and, and it's not that they have it now, uh, because at the end of Marie, the result is not to have a, a system to measure RRI maturity and not even a, a system to uh, measure impact of uh, policy embedding, policies embedding RRI. Uh, this is something which is super important and something that, uh, for instance, Regional in Emilia Romagna has been, has been working on uh, while um, 
designing the, the next smart specialization strategy, but this is not uh, uh, something that we were supposed to deliver within Marie. Uh, there might be uh, an additional smaller uh, project that um, uh, we might um, propose to the Interact Europe JS because they have additional funding that uh, uh, they, you know, they find themselves with uh, after the basically closed uh, operations. So we were actually thinking of, of, of really trying and, and work on this idea of uh, impact measurement, but there's, there's nothing in place, uh, nothing um, comprehensive and, and consistent in place at, at the time, at, at the moment. Uh, in marine regions, let's call the marine regions. Would anyone have anyone else have any curiosity or question for Julia? So if I understand correctly, now you are in a phase where uh, regions should be trying somehow and testing with these new approaches, right? Absolutely. And do you have, maybe it's a bit too early, but do you have any news on how they are? Yeah. Uh, they are doing? I mean, there has been COVID in the meantime, so maybe they, they have been struggling and prioritizing things differently, but... I was curious to know also because I was at the final meeting of Marie that was over a year ago and uh, I just realized it's been one year so I'm curious to okay. know if you have updates. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, there, of course since the action plans are up and running there are actions taking place and there are, um, you know, outcomes and, and, and lessons that we're learning as, as um, the actions proceed. And for instance, I'll just mention a couple of examples. Um, one example is, is from Tampere region. What they did, they already um, had two open calls for innovate, not sorry, yes, uh, innovation projects or research projects, I don't remember, uh, dealing with uh, artificial intelligence projects. And uh, they used, uh, in order to as assess the, the projects, uh, they use uh, some RRI-inspired uh, criteria. Um, actually, uh, not, not really to assess the project as in the worst scores connected to, but uh, it, they were requirements in terms how um, the, the, the organizations that were submitting the proposals were supposed to design the proposals. So they were uh, asked to reflect how, you know, they were dealing with the ethical implications of their project, which is something that always happens at European level, but it doesn't always happen at regional level. So this is not something that goes without saying for uh, regional, uh, you know, regionally funded innovation projects. And, and also they were demanded how they were planning to engage with, with the, their stakeholders, how they identify them. And, um, and apart from the fact that the projects that were submitted uh, were of course uh, consistent with these requirements in the way that they were described, um, a byproduct, so to speak, was a better understanding on, 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 on this organization's part of what our arrive was about. There were seminars and there was an help desk, so they had the opportunity to ask what the region was actually asking, why they were asking it, and uh, so it was a moment of awareness raising around, uh, around our arrive. And, and for the region, of course, um, although, it, you know, we it wasn't, uh, there wasn't a premium scoring connected to, to that. And nevertheless, the, the project that were funded had elements of RRI in them because it was demanded that they had them in the way they were described. So now they're following up 
uh, as in, you know, the first code projects are already up and running, the second code projects are just started. So now the region has new, an opportunity to see whether these, these preconditions that were they, they demanded the, the components to put in place are actually uh, delivering results that can be uh, that that deliver impact on on, on uh, responsible research and innovation and the regional maturity. The thing is, uh, as I was saying, that we actually are missing uh, a way to to measure impact. So it's it, everything is very qualitative. Like we know that enterprise X and 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 Z. They understand better that maybe are doing it okay that um, maybe a couple of professors have been curious and they're doing some research so it, it, it's, it's qualitative information that we have about the fact that something has changed we couldn't turn it into numbers i think roger wants to say something it's, it's very interesting to hear you reflect, Julia. Um, and I think that the, there is one similarity with many other of these projects, either national or European level or, or in different types of contexts, which is um, you find a strategy uh, that works and, and it kind of, it works as long as one doesn't go too much into the detail. So it, this is often true, right? So if, if we start to discuss the finer details of, of the indicators and their robustness and things like this, it all sort of dissolves between the fingers because nothing holds up to the scrutiny. And, and this, is, this is, I think, true of every such project. So, but somehow it works anyway, right? There, there, it's kind of fit for the purpose and it's selected to be fit for the purpose rather than that it's totally robust at the bottom because it, it isn't, right? Because the keys are not robust. And, and the kind of data you have uh, that, that anybody will have here is not robust. And I remember when we were in the expert group for, for our uh, indicators, one of the biggest discussions all the time was, you know, a typical ethics indicator is, was there ethical scrutiny or was there an ethics committee? which you can count, but having been a member of ethics committees, most people would know that many of these ethics committees are just ri ridiculous, right? So it's nothing going on in the ethics committee that is important in any way whatsoever. So, so, so but still this kind, there is a level, there's a kind of intermediate level where you get things up and go going and you're achieving positive things. And, and here comes the question. So probably the reason why it works, and this I've seen in other projects, is not the framework. It's not the theory. It's something else. It's some kind of tacit knowledge, some kind of inarticulated analysis or experience. Or, so, so in a way, the actors here, here, like you and your colleagues, you know certain things and you have a, a, a kind of smartness that makes it work. So it would be very interesting to try to, you know, articulate some of these success criteria. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, the thing is, it, it's like, you know, making things work and, and uh, being able to represent them in a way that's understandable by everybody are <laughs> two opposite things, you know? Because uh, we, we, we feel that we always have to find a set of indicators that works for everyone, because if we don't, then what we do is not meaningful. That what we do is, is like, um, you know, just the results of, of, of pure luck or something like that. Um, it, it is as if we mistrusted ourselves as being able to do something just because we cannot put into numbers and compare with the very same numbers of, you know, of others, which is something that, of course, you know, 
if you look at you know statistics as as a science uh, or or even economics as a science you want to be able to compare you want to be able to back your uh, what you're saying with as you were saying with robust information and and, and stuff but um, then what really happens at at, uh, at at you know at street level in a way and regions are very close to the street level is the result of so many different things no that um, that that they happen no matter what <laughs> you know and, and and you just can't measure them and um, I think that this obsession that we have for indicators that work for everyone. It's, it's just an obsession. Uh, um, we, many years ago, we were trying to uh, set up a standard, um, set up guidance, a standard for um, responsible innovation management at company level. And, and of course, indicators, you know, came into, into the pictures. Uh, in the picture and the best that we could do at the end of the day after you know a lot of thinking was to say that a company shall have indicators and these indicators should be agreed upon with their stakeholders continuously monitor it and and uh, periodically review so that they keep making sense for those that were you know affected by that innovation that were part of that innovation and and uh there's no industrial standard there's no sectoral no territorial standard with with which can be defined if not you know the golden rule is it should matter to the company as in uh you know they can measure that they can do that and to the stakeholder as in if they really address what what you know what they fear and therefore needs to be managed and what they wish and therefore needs to be delivered. And, and I understand that this is very confusing. It's confusing for the enterprises, it's super confusing for the policymakers, it's confusing for academia, it's confusing for everyone. I think that the great lesson that we should learn from the, the COVID pan pandemic is that, uh, you know, things happen that you, couldn't foresee that you still cannot monitor and still they happen and you're doing something about it and you're even successful in doing something about it but you're still not able to measure it or to measure it in Italy the same way that they measure it in Germany for instance I don't know how to get out of this hole though I think that was a wonderful uh, reply thank you very much <laughs>